Yay! William! Yay! Hug! They were one. The problem now is that they are 14 and 15. It's not like that. I'm not saying they can't be friends. How are you, man? It is that one passes. When he's passing with his father, the Lord, he will not come down from the horse and greet you. First, maybe later he'll come to the kitchen. But as he's riding past, coming back from a distance with the king, he passes. Now later... That evening, maybe after he's gone through all sorts of state protocol, come to the kitchen. Ha, ah, Billy! He's a humble guy, if he's still humble. But even this will last for just a while. It's not pride, it is what it is. It's the word of the Lord in power. Word of God is power. Word of God is power. These are the things we are meant to maturity. The Lord will show us himself as a king because he was calling us to maturity from the very beginning. Doesn't want babies, a house full of babies only. Yes, you can go from being born to being a grown up, but you can grow fast. You can eat well. You can exercise. You can be involved in training. You can be raised like a noble or you can be raised like someone going nowhere. You can be trained from early days to start developing muscle and skill not just with use use of so picture the medieval times the times in the past where a young man was being raised to be the prince of a kingdom they wouldn't handle him softly they would push him out there he would be sent he would serve a knight a young man a noble young man someone raised as nobility would be sent to serve in different ways depending on where it was sometimes he would serve as a page for a lady i've spoken on these things in the past yes past a page in the process, you learn fine behavior. You learn to act like a gentleman. He didn't, they didn't just put him in rough areas only. No, no, he has to learn finesse, to learn how to buy. He has to learn how to behave. So they'll place him around females to at different times. So he learns how to act. A mixture, different thing contributed to making him a nobleman's son. If we allow these workings in us, someday you might be strong. Now, you know, male or female, it doesn't matter in the spirit realm. What matters? is do you know how to wield armor and weaponry? Do you know how to carry yourself in court? The ways of the court. Do you know how to approach the king? Do you know how to present your case? Have you learned the diplomacy of the court? All of this takes time. It takes training. It takes effort. It, it doesn't come on you. You don't stand up and know what to do. No, a baby will spit water anywhere. A baby, a young person, doesn't have a sense of decorum. You have to be taught. You can only learn if you're willing to learn. You can only learn if you desire. And you can only learn if you have tutors over you, instructing you, commanding you, rebuking you, guiding you, encouraging you, nicely or harshly. The important thing is where are we going? That's always the goal. And you know why in much of the body of Christ there's not direction and all that? Because people don't even know we are going anywhere. If you're a peasant, you live a bit like an animal more. You eat, you walk, you sleep, you eat. So, like, so that's how animals tend to be. They don't live with a grand purpose in mind. There's not this big thing. There's not this big plan. There's no, come on, royalty. When you read that the people of Beria were more noble, you've heard that? Noble, nobility, because they search scripture to see if it's so. And we've seen in many, many times, Proverbs 25, verse 2, Acts 17, 11, they were more noble, Berian Christians. They received the word with readiness, search the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Proverbs 25, verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. So the Berian Christians searched it out because they are kingly, noble. They are going somewhere. Let me explain nobility for those of you that didn't read uh, those kinds of storybooks. Uh, about kings and princes and all of that. A nobleman knows from the beginning whether he's one of the king's lords. A kingdom could have five lords. The Philistines, for example, they were the five lords of the Philistines. They were five city-states, which were all Philistia. Gat, Ashkelon, and a few of the others. Listen, together, they were royalty. Now, they could have one king. I don't know if Philistia had, but they could have one king, a king over them. These lords provided protection, 
and representation. They are the ones that form part of the king's council. They have soldiers that enforce order in their own lands and territories. Is this clear? The point is this. A lord had power. A lord had authority. A lord had property a lot. The Lord strengthened the king or they could weaken him. They could even plan and overthrow him. Their armies supported the king's armies. Together, they faced out. All right, what's my point? From the earliest days that you were born into nobility, you knew there was a big difference between you and the peasants and the serfs. Is this clear? Very big difference. You're not the same. Mm. <laughs> You're not the same. You're raised differently. You're taught differently. The peasants back then, they couldn't read or write. Couldn't do most of anything in most cultures. The Jews, God had said everyone should know how to read and write. So the Jews, male, female, everybody knew reading and writing. But others, no, 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 no. For what? It wasn't that common. It was a rare thing. The class that knew how to read and write were nobility and the priesthood of whichever culture. Those were the primary ones that could read and write. This is a challenge. Most Christians are peasants in thinking. They don't know this. It's that we are just one of the crowd. <laughs> we eat. If we are in trouble, we run. Help us! Then we don't, we don't mind being pushed around up and down by anybody doing anything. What's your own? Do you know what they are saying? Eh, is it you? Have you read what they've read? Do you know anything? Leave it now. Uh -uh. The man said that that word, tell you, means telephone why are you arguing do you know more than him keep quiet amen that that's the mindset of the peasants is like ah, my lord now i spoke in the morning about learning servanthood absolutely needed we need to learn to be under but you don't have to be a peasant to be under a master you can be a lord and you can be born into the family of a lord into a born in a manor in a castle and still be under a king do you understand the ruling class of heaven, the ruling class of heaven, the ruling class, the ones that seven times, Revelations 2 and 3 say, to him who overcome, those people are going to have to think like nobility. You can't think like a peasant. Who doesn't care? Who doesn't, eh, okay, eh, is that the truth? Anything anybody says, you agree. No, Berian Christians search things out. It's the glory of God to hide, conceal matters. It's the glory of kings to search it out. Those who are interested in knowing and understanding and going deeper are the people God will go further with. Those who don't care, who are shallow, you like shallow things. And let's keep it simple, let's keep it simple. What's my own? If I just have food to, if I just have money, eh? see, eh? see, eh? see, eh? Uh, that state of heart cannot carry. Nobility knows from early on that she's going to have to learn how to speak French. She will be sent over to her cousin in France. She's going to go and live in the court of Louis the 11th for at least three years. She will learn French. She will learn manners. She will learn how to hold a glass, how to dance the waltz. She will learn this. She will learn that. She will all sorts of things because she is royalty. She's not going to be able to be normal. Everything about her is planned. Marriage, everything. You can't just stand up. China, just like anything, mm -mm, it will lead to problems. Nobility knows they will go deeper. You will learn Latin, Oga. Okay? That boy you're playing with, the gardener's son, because you're a little child, understood, you can play with him for a while. But as you begin to mature, you begin to separate. The difference becomes clearer and clearer. When you come back, by the time you're 15, <laughs> this Oga okay has stood at table with kings planning war. Lord saying, I will move my soldiers from this point to this point. Give me water. Yes, get cups of wine for everyone here. He's there. He's in, he has stood in the presence of battles being planned, wars. He has ridden in the background from 11 to 12. He's, he's learned to ride horses. He's practiced jousting. He's done all sorts of things. Billy, the farmer's son, has heard stories about. Billy's, Billy, his best friend. Billy! Yay! William! Yay! Hug! They were one. The problem now is that they are 14 and 15. It's not like that. I'm not saying they can't be friends. How are you, man? It is that one passes. When he's passing with his father, the Lord, he will not come down from the horse and greet you. 
first is maybe later he'll come to the kitchen but as he's riding past coming back from a distance with the king he's sitting straight like this because that's how he's been trained he passes now later that evening maybe after he's gone through all sorts of state protocol come to the kitchen ha ah, Billy he's a humble guy if he's still humble he doesn't if he still doesn't care but even this will last for just a while it's not pride it is what it is his brain and Billy's brain if you see the gap he speaks three languages Billy's the quality of English Billy speaks the Cockney accent you can't understand it this guy speaks Latin writes in Latin speaks French writes in French speaks a Germanic language writes in it and speaks English he spent two to three years in each of those countries in castles and manors I am sorry you are not the same you know that thing where you say where well, everybody is the same I didn't say you're not a human being. You have two eyes, one nose, man. But you're not the same. Again, not because you want to be different, but the purpose of your life. Are you listening? You understand this thing I keep saying about purpose? The purpose of your life does not allow for you to go on like Billy, whose most fantastic exposure to date, after he grew up out of his mother's stories by the fire at night, has become his father's tells. His father is the gardener. He doesn't even go to war. But he remembers when he was a boy and their clan came under attack and they told every young man to pick up whatever implements they had. That was the one time his father saw some action. But his father's brother who joined the king's army, this thing, has told them stories before he died four years ago. He had told them so. So those are the stories Billy has grown up hearing. Story. William has seen battle, has been in the tents of warfare. William has gone out in the company of the two different lords he stayed with. He's been right next to them. He's seen men's legs cut off, bleeding. He's seen people dying. He has seen warfare. His brain is much more mature. He's, he's not trying to look down on Billy. But they don't have that much to gist. When Billy opens his mouth, say, hey, mate. Yeah, ah, today I saw her. Ah. It's not pride that can't let them gist long. Who can understand what I'm saying? It's not pride that is interfering with the ability to gist. It's, it's lack of commonality. As he's listening to Billy, it sounds like he's talking to a three-year-old. He, he, the amount of humility it takes to stay. But even as he's there, he knows, well, I probably won't see this guy again for another five years. Even if we see... Ah, what will we say now? Billy's all like, hey, this this some fancy clothes, eh? Hey, 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 you're some fancy guy now. Hey, Billy is like almost imbecilic in his eyes. Not because he is. Billy is absolutely normal. He's popular among his... Do you understand? The problem is William. William has been hanging out with lords. With, with another level of humanity. William is being trained to fight battles. A time will come. William may be put in charge of a ship with 200 soldiers in it and be sent to land in a foreign country, Prussia, for example, back then. Land and an attack. When the king has meetings, the present king or the upcoming king, depending on his father dies, they will call and say, you, your men will take here, here, here. Those are the kinds of responsibilities William is going with. Billy, Billy, anyone that conquers their village will rule him. Can you understand the problem? Question, which, what are you? Because if you're a Billy, I will always be boring. I don't even know what he's saying. That is, that's Greek to me. If you're a William, maybe we might find common ground. We might be able to engage in ways that are beneficial to us both. If you care about the things that the king cares about. Because that is the real difference. William was trained to assist the king. Billy is assisting in his own way by feeding the household of William, the castle, the manor. Yes, he is. He's not, he's not irrelevant to, I hope you heard me. But it's on a different level. They, they are not going to call Billy ever and put him in charge of... He might be in charge of the other gardeners. They are, there's a team of eight main gardeners with their families that handle things. He might end up being the head gardener. That's outstanding. That's the highest post he's aiming for. He has goals. He told William the last time he came, he said, you know, no, 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 no. My father said, they're thinking of making me the, the, the next head gardener. It's a great aspiration. It's, it's the highest he can aim for it. 
it, it's his dream. Is it evil? No. Everybody cannot be one of the lords around the, in the king's court. Cannot be in the king's council. Everyone cannot be. It's impossible. There always has to be leadership. I am not saying you should aspire for what God has not called you to be. But I'm trying to let you know that there is a calling like this. This is what is known as the hope of his calling. Ephesians 1, 17, 18. I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling. The hope of Billy's calling is to be head gardener. The hope of William might even be to be king because he's related to the king. And if all the male in that family, even the female pass away, by the time they count in lines of succession, he stands at position number four. If anything happens to others, he will be the next person position. He might become king. But at the very least, he is always going to be on the king's council. He will always be relevant. There are only seven like him that advise the king. Only at that level of authority, he commands thousands of men in his land. When battles finish, when they are sharing rewards, they don't say take 500 ducats money. They know that's not what they say. They say, well, out of this newly conquered territory, I'll be giving you the province of... They, they share they share towns. That's, that's the level. When they praise Billy for doing well, they throw him a silver coin. Boom. And he's very happy. He hasn't seen this kind of money except two times. They gave his father one. I hope the illustration helps. This is a thinking of nobility. And this is the reason people gave up their life. There's a nobility in the future. He commented on it where Jesus said, the least and the greatest in the kingdom. That's the peasants in Matthew 5. The peasants and the royalty and everything in between. Multiple levels. And all the choices you make today determine what you will be. So this is why the devil focuses on distracting us with money and everything else. At the end, you're going to end up being a billy because all you're interested in is food. Like you are a common, you're just an empty person. You're not very evil, but you are very normal. And then there will be those who say, no, no I, I aspire for higher things, please. Not money. The book of Ecclesiastes tells you, woe to you, O land, if your rulers are children who wake up to eat early in the morning for your belly. Live for. Uh, you want money early in life. Ecclesiastes 10, 16. Woe to you, O land, whose king is a youth and whose prince is feast in the morning. Listen, do you see the problem? The problem is not with feasting, it's when. Do you see when these guys feast? Want to make it before I'm 26. Woe to you. Ah, by the time I'm 22, I'm hoping to be the first what? The first what at 22? Why do you want, why are you trying to make waves at 22? Something is wrong with your heart. Woe to the land. The word woe means grief, sorrow. Sorrow to you, O land, if you are king, the people ruling over you. And this sorrow is for now, because the time is coming when we will sorrow no more. That means this child, a child cannot be a ruler in the age to come. Are you hearing me? Next verse, verse 17. Blessed are you, O land, whose king is what? A son, son of, of nobles. nobles. And whose princes feast at, at the, the proper, proper time. time. For, for strength, strength and, and not, not for, for drunkenness. drunkenness. Why do we feast? When do we feast? At the proper time. time. And do you notice this land is blessed because the king is a son of nobles. Do you see this? In other words, he was raised through a process. Pity the child of God who has great ideas without preparation. Unfortunately, many people think that the thing to aspire to be is to be famous like a famous preacher, anointed and gifted, like an anointed and gifted preacher. That's the picture most young men and women carry in their head when we say, even that's to those examples I just gave, you're thinking, yes, so I want to prepare to be a king, I have authority now. No, everything in this earth now is school, education. That process of learning French and Latin is in this life. The actual leadership, the actual rulership, the actual authority comes when you enter into the next age. When the Lord Jesus sets up a kingdom and appoints his king, as Matthew 25 and Luke 19 tells you, and says to you, rule over 10 cities, rule over 5 cities. You think it's time to grow up? Do you want to be a Billy or a William? Yeah. You know Billy is short form for William? Yes, 
So that's the difference. They will not call him King Billy the Third because their lives are taking different directions. Billy, who call him William? Who can pronounce William in his village? This is a William. William, Lord of Gloucester. The other guy is Billy the Gardener's son, who goes on to become Billy Gardner. That's where the names came from. All those farmers, all those white names, that's where he came from. I'm serious. Smith, their lineage. They used to work with Meta. Yes. But the nobility's name will be William Estuval Gloucester, Reginald Bloomington. They come, their, their lineage matters. They hold it. This other one. Billy the fan son, Billy Farmer. They called his father Farmer till they became his name. I hope all of us will go on to be William. I hope you desire the deeper things of God. I hope you will mature. I hope we will remember the message. Light to everyone.